So when you first approach an ECG, we want to look at the patient information. We want to make sure we've got the correct patient and that this ECG is taken at the correct time for what we want. So a patient might have come in with chest pain and you look at the ECG and it looks completely normal. But if that's the wrong patient, then you could be really altering their care and giving them substandard care. So we need to make sure that we've got the correct patient because this can very easily happen in busy hospitals. And secondly, we want to check the time and date of this ECG. Lots of patients will have many, many ECGs over their lives. Say if they're regularly in hospital or they've got an ongoing condition, they might have ECGs several a month. So you want to make sure we're looking at the right one because some ECG changes can come on over the course of minutes or hours. And if you've got the incorrect one, this might not marry up with what the patient is experiencing at the time. OK, and the next section of that is rate, rhythm and axis. We'll get on to what those all mean in a second. We we're talking about how quickly the heart's beating, whether it's beating regularly or irregularly. And the axis refers to the major direction of electrical spread in the heart. And then once we've done that, we're going to move on to a systematic dissection of each element of the ECG. We're going to use our understanding of the anatomy of the ECG trace that we've built and work through the P waves, the PR interval, the QRS complex, the ST interval, the T waves, and then we'll wrap up and come to hopefully a diagnosis. And then there'll be a bonus section where we'll talk about spot diagnoses. These are things where they're either dangerous or very rare, and we want to be able to go, that's what's going on without having to use this full approach of going through rate, rhythm, axis and systematic dissection. So we'll move on to rate and rhythm now. I've put them together because they marry together quite well how quickly the heart's beating and how regularly it's beating. So rate, we want to determine this because we want to know if the patient is uh, within the normal realms of heart rate, 60 to 100 beats per minute whether they're tachycardic, over 100 beats per minute, or bradycardic, under 60 beats per minute. And the way that we do that is we use something called the rhythm strip. So if we think about the ECG itself, we've got the 12 leads all mapped out, showing us a few seconds worth. And then at the bottom, as we'll see later in some examples in the quiz, there is a 10 second full recording, 10 seconds of full recording from lead two. And we're going to use that to figure out our rate. There are many ways to do this, but I think this is the easiest. We're going to count how many QRS complexes there are, because, of course, the QRS complex corresponds to ventricular depolarization overall, which is what causes ventricular contraction. And that is what you feel is the pulse in your wrist. So the number of QRS complexes is a direct correlate to the number of pulses you would feel in your wrist or anywhere else in the body. So we're going to count the number of QRS complexes in that 12 in that 10 second recording, the rhythm strip, and multiply that number by six to get the number of QRS complexes in 60 seconds, and that will be our heart rate in beats per minute. After that, we're going to assess the rhythm. So what we want to know is, is the rhythm regular or irregular? And there are two ways in which we do this. One is by visual inspection, simply looking at the trace and looking, does the distance between all the QRS complexes look regular or does it change over time or it might be short here, longer over here? And then the second way is by using something called the paper trick. So if you've got a physical paper ECG in front of you, what you can do is you can you can get another piece of paper, bring it up to the ECG and mark the two dots between the tips of two QRS complexes. And then physically bring that paper along the ECG, along that rhythm strip and see, does the distance stay the same across? And that can be particularly useful where it might be quite a subtle irregularity. So let's look at three examples now. So this is the first example. So on visual inspection, I would look at that and say, it looks quite regular to me. I would say that the gaps in between the QRS complexes look quite even. So I'd say that's regular. And we can check that with the paper trick. So we've drawn an arrow representing the distance between these two QRS complexes. And then we move that across and see, does it match across the whole width? And I would say that, yes, it does. That is a regular rhythm. Next, ignore those arrows. So this is another example of a, uh, a rhythm strip here. And by visual inspection, I would look at that and say, I'm not quite happy that that's regular. Because we've got these gaps here, which look about three and a half sort of large squares across. And that looks quite regular there. But then we've got a large gap here where there's no QRS complex. So we've got a large gap between these two QRS complexes of seven or eight large boxes. So that is not a regular rhythm because the distance has changed here. So 
then we could use our paper trick and we draw that arrow and say, OK, it actually looks regular there. Then there's a big gap and it falls off. And then if we bring it back up again, it looks regular again there. So while it's an irregular rhythm, it has some regularity to it and that it has these stretches of two or three QRS complexes where the rhythm is maintained at a regular rate and then it drops off and then gets a regular rate again. So we would call this a regularly irregular rhythm. And lastly, we've got this rhythm strip here. So on visual inspection, I would immediately say this doesn't look regular because we've got this gap here, which looks a lot larger than that gap there. So it's clearly not a regular rhythm. And then we are looking if it's regularly irregular or irregularly irregular. That is, can we see any pattern within this irregularity? So we can use our paper trick for that. We look there and we say, OK, that's our first two set of QRS complexes. See if it matches any of the others. No, it does not. So I would say that is an irregularly irregular rhythm where there seems to be no rhyme or reason or pattern to the rhythm of those QRS complexes. Those are our three main types. So to recap, the rates, we're going to count the number of QRS complexes in the rhythm strip over 10 seconds, multiply that number by six. Then for rhythm, we're going to visually inspect the rhythm strip and see whether we think it's obviously regular or obviously irregular. And then we can use our paper trick and look for patterns to see if it's regularly irregular or irregularly irregular.